feedback. And this is some of your faces. Just got back yesterday from a long uh, Christmas break. Me and Ms. Bono went down to Florida for the Florida Sun, so in case you're uh, wondering how it went. went okay. I'm not a huge fan of the sun. I enjoy the cold, unlike most of you. So it wasn't as great as you thought, at least weather wise. Family was great, visiting family. Uh, was Christmas great here? Yeah. Sure. It looked like a lot of fun. I saw pictures, I saw videos, I saw some of you guys showing off your presents and stuff that you got. And aside from that, too, a lot of the events that you guys have been doing. Uh, there's been roller skating and uh, movies. What else? Daddyland. <laughs> sure. <laughs> all right, awesome. Yeah, so you got all these events that you guys have had while you've been on break. There's been a lot. Um, thank you to those that have been instrumental in making that happen. Uh, it's great to see you guys have fun. Um, I know how much fun you guys have inside the classroom. And maybe you guys have that much more fun outside the classroom. Um, so uh, on our way back yesterday, I realized the date. Right. Remember, the last time I spoke, I, uh, I informed you about my year and how it went and all the great things, all the wonderful things, and all the not so good things. Remember that? You guys kind of like took a snippet of my life and it was kind of like, whoa, that's a lot. Yeah, it was. Right? And yesterday actually happened to be the date a year ago where I proposed to this moment. Yeah. I know. Right? And I didn't notice that until, well, like, through the car ride. I was like, Am I supposed to do something? Am I supposed to be proposed? Just to do it? Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Uh, so, I, I, as I, we got to the house, we got our stuff settled in, and, you know, I crawled into bed, and I was like, hey, I said, you know, I proposed to you here. And I guess you call it a proposed anniversary? Proposed anniversary? Proposed anniversary? I don't know what it is. Is it even a thing? I, I guess. But her response to that was, wow, it's. It's been a crazy year. Or what a year. Something like that. And I thought back and I, you know, I showed you my year and it was like, this has been crazy. It's been full of all kinds of unexpected things and uh, very significant moments throughout all this month of year. And so now we're at this point where, at this point of the time of the year, where you start hearing people say, man, I'm ready for 2019 to roll around. I'm sick and tired of 2018. It's been a bad year. Right? Or, or you get some people who are like, I'm not ready for 2019. 2018 has had a lot of great memories, you know, just a lot of fun things. I don't know if I'm ready for another year. I don't know what this year holds. Right? Or some of you are kind of like on the line where it's like, why don't we just like stay on December 30th for the rest of my life? It's been a great year, but there could be some good things that happen that I don't want to take the risk, right? Some of you might even say that your change doesn't make a difference. It's your state of mind that makes a difference. Right? That's kind of some people say that. Right? So this holiday of New Year's does bring about new things, though, right? It, it can bring about new memories, new friendships, new families, new jobs, new opportunities, and many other new things, whatever it may be. It may even bring about a New Year's resolution, right? How many of you have ever done a New Year's resolution? I, I don't know. Right? Where, where, where you decide when the New Year comes around, all right, I'm going to start doing this thing, right? My own personal one, I want to start exercising regularly. <laughs> right? I'm going to tell myself, all right, I'm going to exercise. And in my experience so far with New Year's resolutions, I've never been able to fulfill it, ever. Right? I get like to day two, and I'm like, oh, gosh, this is so hard. Right? Or if it's good enough, maybe February, the latest. Then I go, well, well there's always next year. I get mean, back, back on track of the next year, and you know, maybe I can fulfill that New Year's resolution. And it never happens, right? But some people around New Year's time, they start a diet, maybe. They want to start eating right, eating healthier. A potential, you know, splurge every once in a while, a big chocolate cake that comes out. I guess what's right around here. Not in the name. Whatever chocolate cake, I don't know. Ice cream. Dairy cream. There you go, dairy cream. And some try and exercise regularly. Some try and be more faithful to church or other spiritual disciplines that maybe you weren't so good at in the previous year. Some try to perform better in school. I like, oh, for straight A's. That was me in school. Straight A's. I get my first homework assignment back with a C. I'm like, well, there goes that plan. <laughs> Someone's like, you don't even have the rest of the year to make that up. No, nope, that's determined. I got to see. It's done. It's my first grade in grade book. It's all over with. Right? That's, that's how easy I give up on these resolutions, by the way. So I appreciate your prayers for mine. Um, some others have goals to better their reputation. 
right, to do better things for other people more often. Right? I, I one time saw my cousin, she was in her 20s, and she wrote on a piece of paper and stuck it on. She, she actually lived, this is weird, she lived in my bedroom and I was, I lived outside of my house in college. <laughs> Complicated situation. Okay, but she put it on the back of my door because that's where she lived for like two months, maybe longer. And she wrote, do a nice gesture for one person. For New Year's resolution. And I was like, just one? I, I mean, if, it's, if it benefits you from last year, if you didn't do one good thing for anybody, okay, good, you're making progress. But it's just like, <laughs> some people like to do better things for more people, right? More often, right? That, that could be a New Year's resolution. Uh, we, we set this goal on New Year's, and we work hard during the year trying to remember what we promised, mostly to ourselves, what we want to do for ourselves, to try and better it to where uh, by the end of the year we stand maybe more fulfilled, maybe more complete before the end of the year rolls around. And then you, when you start realizing, wow, I didn't do a good job, I'm going to renew that New Year's resolution. Right? In my experiences, like I said, fulfilling them never works out for me. However, I've realized that I never, I have never regretted attempting a New Year's resolution. Because for me, it's, I mean, it's, it's been good things for me, what I think I should be doing better. As the saying goes, right, a new year, a new me. You heard that before? A new year, a new me. This year is going to bring possibilities. It's going to bring you know great moments and a happiness and joy. And you realize when you know February gets here, right? And it's gloomy and snowy and cold, and you're like, oh, this is terrible. The playground closes right after school. And I can't do anything. Right? It's February. And you're like, this year stinks. And then you get to summer, and that's when it starts picking up with all the fun activities and camps and you know, going to the Y and swimming and all these wonderful things, right? So let me share a story with you. When I was 18 years old, I, I received my driver's license. Yes, 18, because I waited. I didn't find a need for it. And my mom, we had one car for the family. There was my mom, my dad, and my three brothers. So that's five of us sharing one car. All right, at this point, my dad couldn't work, so that's four of us. My, other, my youngest brother was too young to get a permit, so that limit eliminates him to three. My brother didn't have his license at the time, so it was just my mom that was able to drive. So my dad physically couldn't. And then there's me, I got my driver's license. So my mom and I split the car. And I would use it whenever she didn't need it, right? And so my brother later on got his driver's license. So we had three people sharing this one car, okay? It was sometimes complicated, because especially when you have multiple people doing multiple jobs, it's it really, really hard to, to dish out the car who's gonna get it. And so I remember it was a Saturday morning and I was sitting on the couch and my brother woke up and. He walked out the door, and I was like, where's he going? He had the car key. I was like, I've got some things to do. And my dad's like, oh, he's going to go meet someone at Chick-fil-A for breakfast. And I was like, oh, what do you mean? At 9 o'clock in the morning, he's committed. This must be a girl. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a morning person. He hates getting up early. I was like, this is serious. Okay. 1 o'clock, that would be normal. 9 o'clock, something's wrong with right, him. So he gets up, and he's gone for like an hour. And he comes back. And he walks into the house, he walks past my dad, he comes into my bedroom, where I was. He's like, hey, come check this out. I was like, okay. He's like, oh, this is a good thing or a bad thing? I can't tell my official expressions here. And he takes me outside, and he's like, look at the car. I was like, oh, gosh. What did you do? I like, I don't see anything wrong with it. It's a white Hyundai Sonata 2015. It's brand new. And he goes, no, you gotta go on the other side. I go, right, so I go and I check on the right side of the car, and there is this huge scuff mark from like the middle of the driver's or the passenger side down past the right rear tire. And this is a huge scuff mark. I was like, what did you do? And he's like, well, I was driving up to go to Chick-fil-A, and he was in the neighborhood when it happened, but a car backed out and hit, hit the car. And he's like, you think Mom will notice? <laughs> this is a white car with a huge black stuff on it. It would cover half of the side of the car. I think anybody in NASA can see this from their side about how big this is. But he's all, he's all concerned, and so I, I'm like, all right, well, we gotta figure out something, and I can't get it off. I have nothing to get it off, and we gotta pick up my mom from work in like, you know, six hours. So I was like, all right, well, we'll just hope she doesn't see it. Right? Maybe, she'll just, maybe the sun will get a glare and she, she won't see it. I don't know. And so, you know, for whatever reason, my brother didn't stop me the insurance information, so the, you know, the 
the situation he's done, he's dealt with it. And of course, my mom saw it after work, and you can see her from a distance. She, she walks out of the building, she just. And she comes to the door, and I was like, hey, mom. I'm trying to act like everything is normal. You know? What happened to the side of my car? What are you talking about? There's a huge stuff mark, and she was all upset because she didn't know what happened, and I didn't know what happened. My brother wasn't there to take the responsibility for it. And she was just upset, it ruined her day. Yeah. Brand new car. She had it for a couple months, maybe. Fast forward four days. Same week. And I remember I was at my church. This is when I was a youth minister at my church in Florida. And I'm sitting there, I remember I was in the youth room, and I had this table in there, and I had all my Greek charts, I had my vocabulary words, I had you know, all my Greek workbooks open, trying to study, because I had an exam on first day class. A big exam, a review exam from summer. And so I had this all out, and uh, my brothers were with me, and they are like, man, we're getting hungry, we're gonna go pick up stuff for lunch. And I was like, no, go do that, please, I'm starving. Go get some Wendy's or something. And so they go out, and they stop at the gas station, and they come back, and I'm sitting in the youth group, and my brother comes in. He goes, Eddie, the car needs to be taken to a shop. And it's like, why? Why are you coming in here? You know, freaking me out. Just, I'm sure it's nothing. It's probably, you know, maybe the oil needs to be changed. I don't know. Maybe it's probably nothing significant. There's no clue. It's like, oh my gosh. There's, there's no way he crashed this car. There's no way. And so I walk out, and this has nothing to do with the scuff mark this time, right? And I'm like, what's wrong with the car? He's like, go on the left side. <laughs> so I, I walk over to the corner of the car, and sure enough, the taillight shattered in pieces. Life that we, that we are promised in Christ. 
these new bodies that we are promised uh, when we get to heaven, uh, this new earth that's described at the end of time, what if, what if it wasn't so much annihilated and gotten rid of to make a new one, but rather to be perfected and redeemed as Christ has mentioned in the scriptures? To make our bodies, to make this earth, to make this life good as new. Maybe that's what redemption looks like. Truly. To redeem and perfect what is broken. To keep what he has created to become and redeem and perfect all the times God could have wiped out everyone to begin anew, but he always found a different solution. He chose to work with what he's got. Right? The closest thing to completely restarting, I think, was the flood. Right? But he used a family that was already there to begin anew. And Jesus, he chose to work within the lives of everyone, you, me, one by one, and to eliminate the sins that you and I have committed, to forgive, to do away with. The greatest gift that the world ever received